Good morning, everybody, and welcome to CEO Chat. My name is Al Sini. I'm Joe Asamendi. Uh, <laughs> have you been here all this time? <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you again, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have too much fun on this program. Um, every week we get to talk to interesting people, but never any more interesting people than the people we have scheduled today. We're, talking, we're, we're here to talk about an event that's going to happen on January 17th that you should be making plans to, uh, to be present for. And we're going to talk about that with Laura Queen, who is the Hello. founder. Yeah. Always, always yeah. great hanging with mm -hmm. you. And Thank actually, uh, she's been on a couple of programs here on RBN. Mm -hmm. um, you are the founder of 29 Bison. Mm -hmm. For a minute, maybe you can tell us real quick, what do you do and what makes you different? Sure. We are a human capital advisory service providing support uh, primarily to capital investors. Our work focuses on everything from due diligence through post-merger integration in M&A and transactions. Mm -hmm. um, and we do work helping post-transaction with organizations that are struggling to bring their new groups together. Mm -hmm. um, we also do some sell-side advising work as a way to build value prior to a potential exit or some kind of um, investment. Okay, great. But what makes you different? I'm trying to, uh, reading between the lines, <laughs> Yes. great company and you do a lot of really great work. But uh, what's key, what makes you really different is that the people in an organization are an integral component of the value of the organization. 100%. And you recognize that and you exploit that. Yep. Uh, a little later on we'll talk about mergers and acquisitions because that's an area where it's kind of a sweet spot. Sure. But, but I want to start by talking about an event that uh, you were inspired to present. It's going to be January 17, 2019. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at the power plant in Philadelphia, which is at 2nd and Arch Vine, like 230 North 2nd Street, I think. Right. And uh, tell us about that event, and we have a graphic we'll put up. Sure. Um, so the event is a networking opportunity that really is grounded in a human performance. Uh, there will be four vignettes, and later on we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks okay. and feels like. Mm -hmm. um, but grounded in human performance to help really explicate the idea around human beings and work settings. And so there will be kind of four sh short pieces that share circumstances that are pretty typical inside of an organization, particularly an organization going through transition. Um, and we will help to demonstrate in a very unique kind of way the value that can be created or um, destroyed potentially by the way people are treated as you go through this as a way to enlarge a conversation about human capital and value building in organizations. How did you um, develop this format like that? It sounds very interesting. <laughs> um, so. The original inspiration for this is Dave Bookbinder's book, The New ROI. Okay, and copy of it here. There you go. Um, we had been in conversation with Dave about the prospect of potentially doing a second, a follow on book, and how might that look, and who might be included in this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be at a, a networking event where individuals were going around the room introducing themselves and sharing the ideas that they were inspired to produce. Many of them were books. Mm -hmm. And as I, as I was listening to this, I kept thinking, who's reading all of these books? And if we are trying to create a movement, you inspire movement through action. We are not inspiring movement necessarily through the creation of yet another book. And how is it that we accelerate moving forward with some of these conversations and hence human performance? We're going to do it in a very yeah. unique and very interesting mm -hmm. way. And we'll, we'll be talking with uh, Sonia Aronowitz a little later on about how her organization is going to help produce this. Right. Because there's a, a lot of value in that. Yeah. Uh, this event, January 17, 2019, $125, is that right? Yeah, $125. OK, yeah. and you're expecting, hoping for maybe 100 people about to attend? 100 people. Mm -hmm. All right. I also want to make the point that there are sponsorship opportunities for this event as right. well. Your, your, your plan is to get uh, executive level uh, employees of small, medium, and large companies to attend this event to learn more about the value of human capital. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I could only begin to paraphrase uh, <laughs> Dave Bookbinder. Right. Getting the human capital part right is his tagline. Right. If, uh, if you don't manage the people properly, then you're missing an opportunity for uh, value in your business. Right. And yes. uh, so we're, you're going to be dramatizing that uh, at this event on January 17th. And um, <sighs> I mean, it, it, to me, it sounds very exciting because it's, a, it's an old message, but it's an adage in a way. Or a, mm -hmm. It kind of just sort of spills out of people's heads and they pay lip service to it. Right. What you're trying to do is bring it to life with this event. Yeah, and I, I think what we're trying to do predominantly is to energize and um, enliven a conversation around 
what I perceive to be an incomplete calculus around how human capital is factored into the financial equation of organizations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and this is the moment where I stand on my soapbox. Uh, when, it, when you go back to modern economics, the economic theory that is espoused by A Wealth of Nations, Adam Smith's work, what often happens is we've moved kind of to this place where we look at um, free market economy and the value of, of people become somewhat secondary to the value of other investment in the business. Mm -hmm. And I think we have, to a large extent, forgotten that the first treatise he wrote actually was the theory of moral sentiments, where he really espouses the value of having empathy in um, taking a look at the values and the perspectives of other people as the f at the forefront of the things that we are doing, which begins to speak to things like employee engagement and the creation of culture as mm. the other side of this equation. But yet we haven't created really good economic formula for this, and so it's a harder thing for us to be able to grapple with inside of the business environment. Yeah, but, but a specialist like 29 Bison, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back after this break, though, let's talk a little bit about mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. and how if you take this calculus into account, you get a better outcome. Sure. So we'll be right back after these messages with more CEO Chat and Laura Queen. Okay. Stick around. Don't Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help. It's just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856-226-4800. When did you see the sign? When I needed to create a better visitor experience. Improve our workflow. Attract new customers. That's when Fast Signs recommended fleet graphics. Yeah, now business is rolling in. Get started at FastSigns.com. What do I want to be when I grow up? Maybe a musician? A veterinarian? Maybe an equestrian? mommy? Well, why not be all these things and more? Consider joining me, Dr. V, with friends and colleagues as we explore a wide range of topics together. V is for variety, here on RVN TV. There you go, Richard. Oh, is that too hard for you? No. Is it too hard for you? Woo, we're playing catch now. <clears throat> oh, shit. Should you choose Rowan College at Gloucester County? Low cost. The number one nursing program in all of New Jersey. More than 70. Welcome back to CEO Chat. My name is Alcini. Still Joe Osmendi. And our guest is Laura Bison, who is the founder of uh, 29 Bison. Laura Bison. Hi, Laura. Laura Queen, who is the founder of 29 Bison. <laughs> See how easy that just came right out of my head. <laughs> I, no, I did not practice in any way, which should be obvious you didn't uh, to it? anybody. I know, no. I, I mean, this might be uh, a little bit too much gin at Thanksgiving yesterday. <laughs> That's another conversation. Yeah. Uh, before, we, before we talk to Laura Cooley at 29 Bison, though, I want to mention that Dave Bookbinder wrote the book, The New ROI. You are chapter 17 in this book, Laura? Yes. I think. I know yes. we're chapter 12. And it's a series of uh, chapters, essentially different stories about how you can apply that calculus that Laura mentioned in the first segment of the program to getting the most out of the people that you employ. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know you kind of specialize in mergers and acquisitions, and that's a sweet spot for you. That's an area where you take maybe two or three companies and combine them. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay attention to the people, what kind of an outcome do you get? 
Uh, well, depending on whose numbers you're using, 70 to 90 percent of those um, kinds of transactions will fail for one reason or another. Mm. And it, most recently, Mercer just produced reporting that said about 30 percent of that you can equate directly to culture. Mm. Um, we would argue that there's probably a bigger component of that that really is just related to involving people at some point in various stages of the transition, mm. um, both in terms of giving them voice because it gives them buy-in to the change process. Um, but also eliciting the knowledge and capability that they have that can be used to create actionable results that help mm -hmm. to improve the outcomes of that transaction. You know, that's interesting. I, I remember reading research a couple of years ago about how uh, many managers, while they hate to admit it, are afraid to talk to their employees. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they have a fear yeah. that something will come up that they won't be able to handle. Right. Uh, that whole idea that somehow they'll say Laura Bison instead of Laura Queen <laughs> uh, and embarrass themselves. Uh, I mean, that kind of, uh, a lot of executives are afraid that their employees are going to put them on a spot. That sure. fear means they isolate themselves. Right. And they tend, then, it's much easier to think of employees as line items on a spreadsheet than it is to think of, uh, think of them as people. Sure. But if you, but like you said, that's, that kind of thinking is exactly where you get a bad outcome from. Yeah. yeah. So, so when 29 Bison takes, uh, it takes on a merger and acquisition project, where do you start that process of making sure that people stay involved? Well, our preference is to start it in the due diligence or the pre-due diligence phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to the extent that the employees are aware that something is happening, our preference is to get in front of as many of the employees as possible mm -hmm. and begin the process of hearing what they have to say, sharing the strengths and successes, their experiences of the organization, so that we can do things like preserve culture where there are elements of the culture that are really important mm -hmm. and we can elicit their support in creating um, some kind of actionable or measurable um, pieces of information that can be utilized to benefit the organization as they go through the integration process. Mm -hmm. um, it's action items uh, it can include, and I've shared this story um, with others, can include things that are as simple as increasing the Wi-Fi bandwidth in an organization because it is it creates some kind of um, productivity inertia from a productivity standpoint for mm -hmm. the employees. And you wouldn't know that unless you were really engaged Unless the you really talk to them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also, you could kind of quell some of the rumors and everything that goes on before. A hundred percent. And you know, the, so to the point that you were making, Al, I think it's really interesting that leaders tend to shy away from the conversation with employees. The employees expect that you won't know all of the answers. Mm -hmm. What they want is for you to say, I don't, I don't have know. all right. of the answers. But but Let's I'm work together to find a way to give you the information that's necessary and to be transparent and forthright about that and to share to some degree in the insecurity that they're all going through as they move through mm -hmm. this process. Mm -hmm. Well, in that article, I remember uh, reading uh, one of the points they made is to be vulnerable is to be powerful. A hundred percent. Yeah, just to be to admit the fact that you don't have all the answers either, but you know where you want to head, and you've got some kind of an idea that people can be involved in that. Right. And involving people in the larger vision that you're serving is uh, really a big part of getting them engaged in the way mm -hmm. your organization works. So, how do we take all this wisdom and kind of come boil it down to something you can present on? January 17, 2019. Yeah. Uh, so we think that the wisdom is in creating a performance that immerses people in what it's like to be on various sides of a transaction. And so the larger umbrella is that each of these vignettes will happen inside of an organization going through a transition, a, an acquisition. Mm -hmm. And we're highlighting various aspects of the human experience inside of that transition period. Mm -hmm. uh, each of them are very different. They're represented very differently. Mm -hmm. And there will be an overlay that helps to uh, connect very very deeply and we hope very constructively with the financial formula that is impacted by the treatment of individuals and through going through this particular transaction okay. uh, but engages the audience in watching experiencing uh, what it's like in each of these individual circumstances to be faced with the, the changes and the decisions or the lack of opportunity to be a part of a decision making inside of some of these transactions and then give you the opportunity as an audience to connect uh, with your peers and the folks that were part of putting the production together in a deeper conversation about well, what that, that makes it like. real. Oh, yeah, that, that's what makes real. the whole thing right. real. And it's so much better than what we called uh, before the program death by power. Yeah. Point, which right. is how a lot of these events are handled. Mm -hmm. uh, the focus is on the content, the content drives slides, the slides become boring, nobody gets anything out of it. Right. Uh, this is a, 
a case where I'm going to a kind of a happening. We, the flower children used to describe these things. Right. Uh, it's kind of a, it's an event that happens that I'm a part of, that I'm playing a role in, and things are unfolding around me that engage me in ways I don't expect, and that's right. what makes it so powerful. Right. Well, I'm, you know, and, and you know, I think ultimately what we're looking for, I guess, is to get manager level people to attend this event. Yeah, we our preference in this particular circumstance, it's the very first time we're doing this, mm -hmm. is to engage senior leaders in organizations in the Philadelphia area as a part of this conversation um, across various functional spectrums and organizations mm -hmm. who really have an interest in understanding how it is in any circumstance where we happen to use the container of a merger and acquisition in this particular situation, mm -hmm. um, but really in any circumstance, how the decisions you make about people inside of your business impact the outcomes of your business and to really draw you into what that conversation looks and feels like mm -hmm. as a way to begin creating a movement toward a more, more holistic viewpoint or perspective about the decisions that are being made and the way we enact some of those decisions inside of our work environments. No, that's key. So, yeah. so people can learn a little bit about how you can have a meeting without having an agenda, without knowing exactly where it's going to go, where you ask people for their ideas and give them an opportunity to share their ideas with each other and with you. I mean, that, it doesn't take much to involve employees in the business that they serve. All it takes is a little bit of care and a little bit of consideration, and, uh, and I think that concern overall is where you're coming from with yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, so HR directors ought to be coming to this? I think HR, I certainly think finance, I think business leaders, founders, CEOs of the organization, um, and I would say your operating professionals, I mean, for the most part uh, in, in some of these larger organizations and in certainly um, labor specific, you know, larger labor populated organizations, things mm -hmm. like your chief operating officer, your head of manufacturing or plant operations, because they're touching lots of the lives inside of your business and we would want them to be involved as well. It's a great Which, idea. How are you getting the word out? Uh, we're sharing it on social media. We're talking through our networking. Um, we're in the process right now of putting together some uh, email stuff that okay. will be mm -hmm. shared with a variety of different mm -hmm. organizations. And certainly, you know, our hope is to involve sponsorship and so that they would be willing and interested in sharing it with their own populations and their, their own, own networks. Population. Mm -hmm. So it's a sponsorship opportunity for a company not just to get their logo associated with the great work you're doing. But to share the opportunity. And, and, and when you sponsor an organization, when you sponsor an event like this, you're saying as an organization that this cares, that this matters to you. Right. That's another way to communicate to your people that they matter to you. Right. So, I mean, there are lots of good reasons why they'd want to do that. What size company do you think would be benefiting by I, attending? Honestly, I think anyone who employs people. Really, at whatever level. Whatever so it could be level. five people in the company. It could be a partnership. It could be a couple of thousand employees in a, in a division that happens to be based in the Philadelphia area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be 40,000 person organizations. The, the message is a universal message. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, that's, that's exciting. And we're going to take a break. When we come back after this break, we're going to bring on uh, Sonia Aronowitz. We're going to talk about how we're staging this event mm -hmm. and what people can expect by attending. Excellent. So we'll be right back with more CEO Chat and Laura Queen after yep. these messages. CEO Chat. My name is Al Sini. I'm Joe Asimendi. And we're joined uh, by two terrific guests. Uh, we've just added Sonia Aronowitz, who is here with Laura uh, Queen, talking about this event that's happening on January 17th. Mm -hmm. uh, to recap, January 17th, Philadelphia, $125 a person, mm -hmm. based on uh, a lot of the wisdom that's found in this book, The New ROI, which is that calculus that you mentioned, uh, taking into account the importance of people in an organization is a direct determinant of the value of the organization. Right. That's key. Now, in order to bring this message home, you've got to do some creative things. You can't just spray images on a wall and expect that to stick inside people's heads. So what can people expect from this event if they come on January 17th? Go ahead. OK. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to expect a set of four vignettes mm -hmm. um, that were designed from a creative brief that we got from Laura and her team. Um, we're not going to disclose too much, I think, beyond that, except that although we called it an immersive experience, this is, doesn't require participation. We want everyone to know that this is going to, you know, they're going to feel safe and not required to perform magic tricks or whatever mm -hmm. you know, they might be expected to do. Mm -hmm. So um, the themes of the plays, as Laura mentioned in the previous segment, are reflect on company in transition and all the sort of points of 
reflection is to do with the humans at the mm -hmm. center of a shifting culture mm -hmm. and transition. And it's been an amazing experience to collaborate with Laura and her team on that. Um, Juniper Productions is an independent producer and we're exploring new markets for art. We believe that art should be for everybody, including people in corporations and mm -hmm. employees who are thinking perhaps even in that mm -hmm. context. And we're opening up the doors wide for people to experience theater in, in new ways. In new and, ways. Yeah. In informative and educational ways, Correct. not just entertaining ways. Yes. So this is kind of like an infotainment experience where you'll enjoy the experience, it's fun, um, it's, you'll be immersed in it, it'll be happening around you or, or near yes. you. The people who participate, the actors may in fact be people you're networking with. Correct, and I would like to add to that that it will be provocative, I think. Mm -hmm. We need, coming from, Juniper operates on that very, there's a fine balance, I think, between art and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we emerge very much from the artistic realm. So, you know, my, my starting point as a producer is the talent. Um, we are, Philadelphia is the beneficiary of a huge amount of talent in the arts. Mm -hmm. And that was a starting point for Juniper, was to serve the human beings, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is, you know, the starting point for all of us here, I think. Um, and so it starts with that moment of craft and people, real human collaboration in the rehearsal room. We've just started rehearsing this piece mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this week, and that is always a very exciting moment when everybody, the actors and the director, and we have a stage manager, and myself as the producer, mm -hmm. take that moment from seeing something on a page to breathing life into it. it. Reality. And it comes alive through people's talents and dedication and commitment. That's exciting. And yeah. this is a good point at which for you uh, maybe to introduce your company, Juniper Productions. Sure. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Juniper Productions is an independent producer of theater and theatrical experiences mm -hmm. um, in Philadelphia. We are two years young. Mm -hmm. um, year one was very much a year of discovery um, mm. for Juniper. Um, I had a, a somewhat of a business background. I had had a career in fundraising, communications, and marketing. I'd had a parallel love and passion for theater, and I was always trying to find my way in. Mm -hmm. And so, as I found in life, sometimes you need to be rejected or do things badly to find out what you're good at. Mm -hmm. And so, so that was my journey towards Juniper, discovering I'm not the world's best actress, mm -hmm. neither am I have a wish to be a drama critic. I've done all of these. I'm a decent playwright, mm -hmm. but having an opportunity to be in a room with other writers made me realize that there are people who are far more talented than myself. Mm -hmm. And I was inspired to serve the playwrights that I got to know being a playwright myself. Which you also saw how a good collaboration can be. Um, yes. collaborate, how great collaboration yes. yeah, it's, I mean it's a collaborative yes. right. yeah. Yeah, yes. uh, during the, uh, during the pre-interview part of the program yes. earlier we were talking about how this is almost a metaphor for the transformation we're trying mm -hmm. to create right. uh, you don't necessarily uh, when you pull an event like this together you're trying to get people to fit the roles in a way that's comfortable for them and right. often they redefine those roles a little bit right. around their own initiative and around their own ideas right. and your point Laura is in a merger acquisition situation mm -hmm. any company allowing people to become the best they can be mm -hmm. may sound a little unpredictable and maybe even a little uncomfortable but you get your best results when everybody is pitching in mm -hmm. right and you know that whole idea that you can get the whole room charged which is really i think what you're trying to mm -hmm. you're trying to create electricity and yes. energy throughout the entire room on on the 17th and i didn't want to make that point we don't call on audience members uh to, right. to participate there yeah. are no surprise there are no ambushes for anybody it's no. not like that no. uh, you go there you can participate at whatever level you choose mm -hmm. And the authors of this book, many of them will be there, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll be available to you for networking opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, plus uh, all your colleagues who are who are there at that event. Right. Yeah. So, so how did you? Where did this remarkable <laughs> idea? It sounds a little crazy. Where did this crazy <laughs> idea come from? 
it, it came actually out of an opportunity that Sonia and I independently took upon ourselves to participate mm -hmm. in. It was a women's executive networking event sponsored uh, in yeah. January of last year, and <clears throat> we happened to be seated next to each other. Mm -hmm. And as we learned a bit about each other and we went through the experience, I. I was kind of inspired to do something different with this body of work. I mm -hmm. walked away from it thinking writing a book probably wasn't the necessarily the best right way to move forward with bringing some of this work to mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. we hope to inspire with it. And I reached out to another one of our production collaborators, Mayor Rosenbaum, and I said, you know what, maybe there's an opportunity to do something like Theater in the Round or what have you. Sony was producing her signature cocktail plays. We then attended the cocktail plays and came out of it just enraptured. I mean, mm. I think it, there was this sort of electric moment of realization that if we could inspire a really deep and meaningful collaboration around this and put mm -hmm. the right brains and kind of creative energy to the forefront in this, maybe there was a way for us to do something different and bring this work literally to life in, in a way that is n neither a book nor a PowerPoint. And totally unique and yeah. very engaging. And uh, you've had a couple of table reads and some rehearsals. Mm -hmm. How do you feel it's shaping up? Well, I, I was at the very first rehearsal this week. And as I said, um, what excites me is the growth of the piece through human um, human talent and commitment. Mm -hmm. This is going to change over the time. I also really want to give a shout out to the woman who's di directing it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that directors of theater are, are not visible, but their work is everything mm -hmm. to a production. Mm -hmm. um, I compare it to the orchestra conductor who mm -hmm. is very visible and receives all the right. applause. Mm -hmm. As a playwright, I've had two short, the same short play produced twice, mm -hmm. and they felt different plays because of the, the director. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I just wanted to take that moment so that that almost that less visible part of putting a production on is where a lot of the magic it, is. It's almost like, it, not, I wouldn't say the, the leadership, the director, uh -huh. and what a director brings to the rehearsal room is, is, is very important to how the whole team feels, obviously the actors first mm -hmm. and foremost. You can have a collaborative approach. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that, as I'm even talking, I think, sure, you can. that can flow between business and leadership best practices and what happens in a rehearsal room right. mm -hmm. between right. the director and the actors to get the best out of the team. To get the best, the yes. best result. And that really, I mean, yeah. that, that metaphor, I think, pervades this whole, that's what makes, to me anyway, that, yeah. that's what makes the whole idea so intriguing. And I, I think uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, we're coming up on the end of our program. Uh, but really quickly, uh, you yes. did mention before the program you have business background. Mm -hmm. yes. So you're not totally uncomfortable talking to people about things that happen inside companies. Actually, I love this the most uh, because I think there are very few arts people who are on that very important intersection of arts and business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can find this place where we can start to speak the same language when I talk about, well, the director in the rehearsal room is, is the leader, is that sort of, can be that visionary, mm -hmm. and how that practice of creating theater with very human and vul vulnerable mm -hmm. right. performance mm -hmm. is, it has its equivalence in, in the business arena. Right. and. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is just a thought that's really taking shape as I'm talking. Mm -hmm. But things like that, and I think being aware of it because I have a business background mm -hmm. makes me more open to seeing that sort of culture and that sort of organizational structure and leadership. There, there, there could be people yes. out there watching this interview now who might want to meet you at this event. You'll be there. Of course. Uh, because they may have ideas for events of their own that they're planning in the future. And this is a chance for them to get to see what the work looks right. like. Exactly. Uh, we're at, at, that, at that part of our program where you get to tell everybody how to reach you mm -hmm. to get a ticket. Uh, I mean, we're looking for people to sponsor the event. We're looking for people to attend the event. Mm -hmm. $125, January 17th, mm -hmm. uh, power plant in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. second and vine, yes. about that neighborhood. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. Food and cocktails, mm -hmm. cocktails, as well as these four cocktail places, which are, yes. sounds wonderful. Yeah. Go ahead and tell everybody, Laura, how to reach you sure. so that they can get a ticket. Um, so they can reach out to either one of us if they have any interest, um, reaching out to us directly, either info at 29bison.com or laura.queen at 29bison.com and we will have the Eventbrite page up shortly 
So right. probably by the end of next week, so mm -hmm. I need to think what day today was, probably by the end of next week we'll have that up. Terrific. Great. Yes, and if anyone would like to reach me, um, my email is sonia at juniper.agency. It's probably the best way to yeah, reach me. It's terrific. Yeah. Great. This is going to be the start of something big. I think you got a great idea. It really could be. It's, really? going to be. it's a terrific event. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a great event. It is. A lot of people are going to want to copy off this event. We're so excited. Yeah. Well, we, you know, ultimately what we would love is to be able to produce this for other organizations sure. and, you know, share the wisdom and the collaborative effort and all of the creative work that Sonia and her team are it's, doing. It's incredible. It's, it's mm -hmm. really terrific. This yeah. is going to be great. Uh, thank you for joining us, definitely. Thank you. Uh, Sonia, it was well, great, great talking to both of you. And thanks, all of you, for joining us on the CEO Chat. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Till then, I'm Al Sini. I'm Joe Asimendi. And you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. We'll see you next week. Okay.